Hi everyone, I'm going to read you a story from the book The World's Worst Teachers by David Walliams today. So this story is called The Incredible Bulk and here he is, this is one of the teachers. Can you guess what he teaches? Yes, right, I think he teaches sports. He's got his tennis racket and his boxing gloves. Right, The Incredible Mr. Bulk. The Incredible Bulk. Mr. Bulk was an enormous oaf of a man, as wide as he was tall, like a hot air balloon in a tracksuit. The teacher wore a tracksuit to school every day, but not because he exerted himself in any way. No, it was because he taught sports. And sports teachers have to wear tracksuits, even if they are less active than a sloth. Bulk had a different coloured one for each day of the week. To complete his look, he had a bushy moustache, a mullet haircut and a huge gold medallion nestling on his hairy chest. Mr Bulk thought he was the coolest teacher around. Sadly, no one agreed. All the boys at Twaddle School laughed at him behind his back. They had a nickname for him that had been passed from generation to generation. The Incredible Bulk. It was cruel, but he certainly loved his food. The teacher always had something big and meaty on the go. A million sausage rolls later, he was ginormous. Now, despite not having the appearance of a natural athlete, Mr Bulk would spend the whole of his lessons making up wild boasts about his sports and achievements. I could have won the Wimbledon Tennis Championships, he would tell his pupils as he devoured a pork pie. Even the doubles playing on my own, two against one. I am that good. Game, set and match. The England football team begged me to be captain for the World Cup final, but I'm on playground duties on Friday, so I couldn't make it. Goal, he proclaimed as he sprayed Cornish pasty crumbs all over the kids. Split, splat, splut. The problem is I'm actually too good at boxing. If I got in the ring with the heavyweight champion of the world... It would all be over in one second. I would knock him out with one single punch. He would brag as he polished off a battered sausage. I'm actually banned from playing rugby at international level as it wasn't fair on all the other players. They would just get trampled underfoot by me as I scored goal after goal. I mean try. He always liked to end with a big shout, even if it meant the meatball he was munching shot out of his mouth and hit a kid a bang in the eye. Splat! Ouch! Basketball is my number one sport. I can shoot a hoop from a distance of a mile with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back. That's why you won't see me playing professional basketball. It's so easy for me, it's boring. He would crow as he chomped on two sausage rolls at once. Chomp, chomp. Now, of course the kids at Twaddle School didn't believe all this nonsense. When he finished the story, they would roll their eyes, the only ex exercise they got. One day, a boy asked, If you're so brilliant at all these sports, sir, why are you teaching here at Twaddle School? This school has never won a thing. It was true. Twaddle School had a trophy cabinet that was empty of all trophies. It really was just a cabinet. Because I'm going to bring home the gold for the school. Bulk replied as he bit down on his bacon sandwich and squirted brown sauce over the boy. Splurge! Yuck! Bacon sandwiches were one of Mr Bulk's favourites, but he loved all the food that was served in the school canteen. Sausage rolls, toad in the hole, meatballs, beef wellington, liver and bacon, all except vegetables. He point blank refused to eat any. Vegetables are for losers, was one of his mottos. Fruit is for wimps, was another. Mr Bolt carried around a dog-eared note, supposedly from his mother, in case the dinner lady pressed him to eat any of either. Dear dinner lady, it said, please can you excuse me, I mean my son, Mr Bolt from any fruit or vegetables. I, I mean he doesn't like them and may well cry if I... I mean, he has to eat any. They taste yucky. Yours thankingly, Mr. Bulk's mum. Mr. Bulk 
may not have troubled with the fruit or vegetables, even if he couldn't, I mean his mum couldn't spell them, but the pupils and teachers would still run to the school canteen at lunchtime. Bring, sounded the bell at noon. It was like the starting pistol being fired. The race would begin. Go, go, go! Run! Get there before the incredible bulk scoffs the lot. It would be a stampede. Stomp, stomp, stomp. They had to get in quick or bulk would have polished off the main course before they even got there. The teacher would pick up the entire tray of spaghetti bolognese or whatever was on the menu that day. Then he would waddle over to his table. Waddle, waddle, whiddle. Slam the tray down. Dunk before burying it burying his face in it. There he is taking all of the food at the canteen. He didn't believe in using cutlery. Cutlery is for quitters, was another one of his mottos. Mr. Bulk ate like a farm animal at a trowel, barely coming up for air. Gobble, gobble, gobble. When he did finally come up for air, his face would be covered in food. And there's a picture of him before and after eating his food. What a mess. He would then belch loudly. Burp! Pong! Bulk had the meatiest burps. They were so meaty you could slice them with a carving knife. Then the teacher would move on to the desserts. Gobble, gobble, gobble! Burp! Pong! before finally devouring enormous meat-based pat lunch that his mum had made for him. A whole roast hog, a metre of salami and a hundred chicken legs. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Pong! His excuse for eating like this. Us athletes need all the energy we can get. I wouldn't want to waste away, he would say as he slapped his big fat tummy. Slap, wibble, wobble, wobble and off and waddled off. After his two lunches, he would crash out on a crash mat in the sports hall and snooze for the rest of the afternoon. There he is having a snooze. Bulk's eating may have been prodigious, but his teaching was not. His sports lessons were a complete joke. What made matters worse was that a huge match with a rival school was looming and not a single boy at Twaddle School had received a moment's football coaching. They hadn't even seen a ball, let alone kicked one. It was the school's football championships, and the Twaddle team was heading for yet another disaster. Every week the boys would plead, Please, please, sir, please can we have a practice game? Otherwise we're going to get thrashed. Have I ever told you my story about the World Bam Badminton Championships? I hit the shuttlecock so hard, it shot up into outer space. Yes, sir, chimed the boys a million times. The days, weeks and months passed and the school's football championships were edging nearer. In the time when the boys should have been honing their football skills, Bulk was boring the life out of them about with his stories about how he could beat anyone in a swimming race across the English Channel. Get a hole in one at a golf course. Outrun the fastest man in the world. Karate kick a tree over. Win the Tour de France on his mum's three-wheeler bike. Wrestle a man to the ground while still eating a bag of pork scratchings. Weightlift the entire science block. Pole vault over the main school building using only a 30 centimetre ruler pole. There he is doing all those things that he said he can do. Okay, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to read the second part of it later. So if you want to tune in, tune in to part two very soon. Bye.